This is an introduction to international eight ball rules. I'm going to give you some a guide to the simplest rules, some of the things you do need to know to be able to understand this rule set. International eight ball rules are the rules that are being used by Ultimate Pool. They've also been adopted by the WEPF, so they are going to start to grow globally as well. This rule set as well are very closely aligned to what's being played in China and also being played in America as well. So there's some huge advantages to using this rule set uh, globally. Uh, but more than anything else, this rule set is just an awful lot of fun. Uh, very, very simple rule set to understand. Some key things that you're going to need to know if you're coming from other rule sets. But if you are new to this game, then this is a very simple rule set to understand. And in this video, I am just going to run through some of the key things you need to know. Okay, let's start by talking about the break and specifically the three point rule. Now the three point rule with the break is a point per ball potted and a point per ball that goes past this imaginary center line. And you need to get three or more points for it to be a legal break. Let's see how I get on. Okay, so I've not made a ball and I've had two balls come past this cent imaginary center line. Therefore, I have not filled the requirements of a three-point rule, and that makes it an illegal break or a foul break. Uh, the, what happens here is the balls have to be re-racked. Important to remember that. The balls have to be re-racked, and my opponent will get the choice of whether they want to break off or whether they want me to break off again, and it will just be a normal break from there. It's an absolute disaster. I've made the cue ball off the break. Now what happens here is a standard foul off the break for my opponent. That means they get cue ball in hand anywhere in the bulk area. That means 50% of the ball behind the break line here, anywhere in the bulk area. And it's just a standard visit from there. Now, had I jumped the cue ball off the table, so the cue ball finished completely off the table, then it would be cue ball in hand for my opponent anywhere on the table and then just a standard visit from there. Okay, deciding color sets. To decide color sets, you need to pot the ball that you are trying to pot. So in this example here, I've come to the table or I've, I've broken off and they finish like this, and I've decided that I want to try and be reds. So I'm gonna to attempt to pot that red in the middle pocket. And by getting down, it's obvious that I'm trying to pot the red. If I get down and I make that red in the middle pocket, then colors would be determined and I would be reds. Now, the reason I mention it, if it's obvious I'm trying to pot that, because if the cue ball was say here, and I, again, I want it to be reds, and I'm going to pop that red in the middle pocket. Uh, to my opponent or to the referee, if I get down on that shot there, they may think that I'm trying to pop the yellow down there. So in that situation, you just need to clarify that you are attempting to pop the red. And in doing that, let me I'll show you, I'm going to nominate reds. And now I am reds, and it's all clear and obvious to everybody. Now, one thing to bear in mind when picking color sets is you have to pop the color you're going for. So in this situation here, where we've got a red yellow plant into the middle, I can't select yellows and play the red onto the yellow to be, be yellows. You have to go for the color you're, you nominate or you're trying to pot. So if I try to pot the red, the yellow going in would just be loss of turn and my opponent would come to the table. And that's one of the rule sets that if you come from other rule sets, that's one of the rules that might catch you out. You have to pot the color you are going for to determine your color set. In international eight ball rules, you have to hit a cushion or pot a ball on every single shot. But you have to hit a cushion after contact with your object ball. So for example, if, I play, if I'm on reds, that would be a legal shot. If I've hit the cushion with the red, but let's say I went this way around, that would be a foul because I haven't hit the cushion after contact with my red. Now, the other thing to bear in mind with having to hit a cushion and having to pot a ball on each shot or hit a cushion or pot a ball is if you are completely snookered, in other rule sets, you can call total snooker, which means you can come off the cushion and just hit your ball. You don't have to hit a cushion after contact. In international eight ball rules, that doesn't exist. There is no total snooker. If you are completely snookered like you are here, you still have to hit a cushion after contact with your object ball. If you don't, then it would be a standard foul. So you're gonna have to play it to make sure you hit a cushion. And that would be absolutely fine there. If I hadn't reached a cushion with the red or a cue ball, then it would have been a standard foul. Okay, a standard foul. What happens after a standard foul? So let's assume that I've come to the table. My opponent has either potted the cue ball, jumped the cue ball off the table, or even missed when they've attempted to hit one of their balls. It would be a standard foul, and you get cue ball in hand, but anywhere on the table. 
If you're coming from the rule sets, you might be used to two shots or you might be used to a shot on a visit or a free shot. None of that exists here. It is just cue ball in hand anywhere on the table and then just a standard visit from there. So you need to be fairly clever with what you do. And in this situation here, I've got a problem here and I'm gonna have to try and open it up with my first shot so I can put cue ball in hand anywhere on the table. Come down here. and then break it out. So the key thing to remember, following a standard foul, cue ball anywhere on the table, and then a standard visit from there. Combination shots. In this rule set, combination shots are allowed. And what I mean by combination shots, you can pot your color set and your opponent's color set, and then just continue on your visit. So let's take this scenario around in here. I'm on reds, and I've got a red here that's blocked by the yellow. I can play the red onto the yellow and make both balls, and I'll continue my visit. So I've made both color sets, and now I can just continue my visit on reds and, and try and clear up. Okay, I wanna talk about the loss of turn shot. I've already mentioned the combination shot where you can put your ball and your opponent's ball in the same shot, and it's absolutely fine that you can continue your visit. But in international eight ball rules, you could, there's a loss of turn shot, which means you can, as long as you hit your ball first, you can pot your opponent's ball, and it is just loss of turn. You turn the table over to your opponent. Take this situation here, this red is causing me some problems tactically. I can play the yellow onto the red, leave the cue ball down there nice and safe, and just turn the table over to my opponent and it would be an absolutely fine and legal shot. Let me show you. So I've taken my opponent's red off the table, I haven't potted a yellow, and I just turn the table over to him and they can come to the table and do whatever he likes from there. So important to remember that you can play a loss of turn you can pot your opponent's ball as long as you hit your ball first. Potting your opponent's ball is absolutely fine. Well, our final thoughts on international eight ball rules are, in my opinion, they are the simplest rule set to understand. You are only ever playing your color set. Really simple rules and a huge amount of fun to play. Yes, they are attacking, but you can have some really good fun with the tactical side of it uh, as well. Uh, have an open mind and go out there and give the game a go.